Hello, everybody. Welcome back. You do have to legally say hello back. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. I am Captain Boring, your host. You know this by now because, like, honestly, I'm actually pretty impressed with myself. I'm pretty impressed with those that tune in. All six of you, pretty much, whenever I release these, I, I at least get six views on these 10-minute sports reports. So I really do, from the bottom of my heart, thank you very much. Uh, again, I'm well aware that most of those six, if not all of them, are related to me in some way. Uh, that's really why I started this podcast, uh, started the other podcast, started this 10-minute sports report for my family. So thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Uh, let's uh, have a little fan inter interaction time. Please comment down below. Are you... We're coming up on... Fall has started, right? Fall has started. It's in the air. Are you more of a scary face? Pumpkin... Uh, Jack, Jack o' Lantern, that's what they're called. Pump, uh, scary face or a goofy face? Which one would you like? Like a scary, it doesn't even have to be a face. It can be a scary thing or more of a goofy thing. Which way are you going? I know it's not October yet, I'm, but I like this fan interaction, so I'm going to start it. So goofy or scary Jack o' Lantern. Mom, never let us do it as, as a kid. I understand why it would have been buttload expensive. Pumpkins are like 10 bucks a piece. Like, it's like, 30 bucks for me and Carrie to carve like two and a half pumpkins. So I get it. All I'm saying is, um, yeah, just let me know. All right. Uh, lot to go over today. Uh, let's just jump right in. We're two minutes into 10 minutes already. Bet you, th bet you didn't have this on your 2023 bingo card. 11,000 runners have been disqualified from the Mexico City Marathon per reports. Uh, per Spanish newspaper Marcia. I'm assuming that's how you say that. However, I can barely speak English when it comes to names. Don't expect me to also speak Spanish. The disqualified runners represented more than one-third of the 30,000-person field that entered the race on August 22nd. Uh, the newspaper reported that Monday runners were disqualified after missing checkpoints that were placed every five kilometers. That's 3.1 miles for those of you who only do English math or American math, whatever you want to call it. Some runners allegedly used vehicles or public transport to cut <laughs> the course. This is the first time. This is a live reaction. First time I'm reading it. Race organizers said in a statement to Marcia, the newspaper again, sorry if I'm butchering that, that they will continue to identify and disqualified runners who skipped sections of the race. Bet you didn't have that on your 10-minute sports report bingo card for today, now did ya? There's a new highest-paid defensive player in all the land, and his name is Nick Bosa. He w went to Ohio State University for college. He is getting paid for five years $170 million. If I could even make 1% of that... Half a percent of that in one year. Woo! Baby, that'd be nice. Uh, that will make him the highest paid defensive player in NFL history. The extension includes a whopping $122.5 million. Again, a half a percent of that. Nicky boy, I know we don't see eye to eye on our college teams. But could you help a guy out? Uh, among defensive players, the $34 million annual payout surpasses the 31.7 average belonging to aging, may I add, Los Angeles Rams defensive tackle Aaron Donald, and the $122 million guaranteed surpasses the 102 mark that Nick's brother Joey Bosa, rich family now, set with the Los Angeles Chargers in 2020. Saying kind of on that football landscape, the father of USC star quarterback Caleb Williams said that his son, who is projected to be the number one overall pick in this year's upcoming draft, so the 2024 draft after the season, might not happen. He says that if the draft order does not work out the way that they perceive would be beneficial to Caleb, 
like a team like the Arizona Cardinals, who are clearly now tanking, that he might stay at USC. Ra, uh, not CFP insider Roberto sent me that link earlier today. I'm reading it. It's just been reported by ESPN. Here is the dealio. I foresee this happening more and more now that college athletes can make money. Caleb Williams is probably making a good seven figures, um, probably at least one and a half million, if not more than that. Now, he would get paid more going to the NFL being the number one overall pick. However, if you can maybe wait around and hang around and get into a draft class that's a little more quarterback loaded, it might drop your stock enough to where you go to a team, a mediocre team, that is just a quarterback away. Um, uh, a lot of teams, that, like the Kansas City Chiefs, they had Alex Smith, they moved up to Patty Mahomes, and now look at them now. Eagles at the time had Carson Wentz, who was balling, got Jalen Hurts in second round. So there's a lot of this going on, but it would not surprise me. Maybe not for quarterbacks, and do I believe this at all? Absolutely not. Do not get me wrong, ladies and gentlemen. When dads, aunts, uncles, moms, whoever, come out and say something about their kid, I never believe it because when parents get involved and try to be kids' managers, it never ends out well. I don't think that this dad has, he only wants good intentions for Caleb. 100% believe that. I just don't believe at all that Caleb would skip out on 20 and 30 millions of dollars to be the number one overall pick, even if it is a bad situation. Oh, I think my... Yes, they did. They broke. All righty. Well, we shall just carry on. There are only two top 25 matchups this week in a college football, one of them being the all-anticipated number 11 Texas at number 3 Alabama at Denny Bryant Stadium at 7 p.m. on ESPN. Alabama breaking in a new quarterback. This is probably the best Texas team under Steve Sarkeesian, not coach. This is probably, in terms of not knowing, the worst Alabama team under Nick Saban. However, Saturday night, 56 to seven drubbing of Middle Tennessee State. The other top 25 matchup will be at, uh, I'm sorry, uh, I got to find it here. There are only two this weekend. It's Alabama, oh yes, it is, and you did not have this on your 2023 college football bingo card. Number 20 Old Miss at number 24 Tulane. Okay, if you could tell me where Tulane is without looking it up. Tell me where Tulane is without looking it up. I'll give you a like and a shout out on the on next uh, pod and or 10 minute sports report. So let me know. All right, let's dive into the lowest salary teams in baseball. I'm waiting for the uh, transition and it's just not going to happen ever. Yep, just not going to happen, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, there it works in my headphones, but I don't think anyone else can hear it. So that's good, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, so the lowest salary teams in baseball, the Baltimore Orioles might be one of the best, if not the best team in all of the land. They are on a four-game winning streak. They are on pace to win 102 games on the season. They are 87-51. and They are now three and a half games ahead of the Tampa Bay Rays. They won two out of the three to the Diamondbacks, and now they've won two out of three to the Angels, and they have yet to play that third game tonight, so they might sweep the Angels all together. So uh, stick around. Baltimore, definitely one of the best teams in all of baseball. And let's get to the Tampa Bay Rays, who were the first half team of the year. I mean, they were awesome in the first half. They slid off here in the second half. They're still 84-55. and There are... They... Um, they're in a win-loss, win-loss kind of mood right now. They are win most recently. They are three and a half games back of the Baltimore Orioles for second place. And I'll get to the wild card standings in just a minute because that's where this stuff gets good. Meanwhile, the Cincinnati Reds back on a track a little bit. They've won two straight. So they split this series with the four-game series with the Cubs. They ended up splitting. Uh, they lost 6-2, 1-3-2, 1-2-1, 1-2-1, then lost 15-7. I think I covered that. And then they've won two against the Seattle Mariners, another really good team that I'll get to in a second, 6-3 and 7-6. So 
they're not out of the wild card spot yet. Speaking of the wild card spot, the division leaders are the Orioles, the Twins, and the Astros now. The Seattle Mariners were leading that division, if everyone remembers a couple episodes ago. But now they've lost three straight, the Mariners have. The Astros sit atop the AL West. Mariners one game back, and then the Texas Rangers have had a terrible month of August, and so far a terrible month of September. They are 4-6 and six in their last 10 games, including losing two straight, and are now two games back of the Astros for first place. National League, it's been a whole bunch of runaways in two out of the three divisions. The Atlanta Braves are 90 and 47, best record in baseball, four and a half games up on 14 and a half games up on the Phillies. Brewers are a game and a half up on the Cubs. Cubs hot right now, four straight wins, seven and three in their last 10. Dodgers, 84 53, 14 games ahead of the Arizona Diamondbacks. Now, this is where it gets fun. The wild card, again. No sound bites. I know I'm at 11 minutes. I'm almost done. I'm bummed there are no sound bites because now the beginning of the podcast won't make sense. And I do apologize, but it has been decided. The Rays sit seven games ahead of the Seattle Mariners for first place in the AIL wild card. The Mariners sit in second place, half game ahead of the third place team, the Toronto Blue Jays. But a half game behind the Toronto Blue Jays are the Texas Rangers. And then... Four and a half games behind the Rangers and five games behind the Blue Jays are the Boston Red Sox who need to turn this on. There are only like 26 games left. Shit, get off the pot. Okay, sorry, Mom. I swore. Don't have my sound bites. Can't do. I'm sorry, Mom. National League. Oh, it's fun in the National League. So Philadelphia Phillies, first place in the wild card. Four and a half games ahead of the Cubs who are in second place in the National League wild card who are three and a half games ahead of the Cincinnati Reds, so that two-game winning streak again coming in clutch here. A half game behind the Reds are the Miami Marlins. A game behind the Reds and a half game behind the Marlins are the Arizona Diamondbacks. Two games back of the Reds and a game and a half behind the Arizona Diamondbacks are the San Francisco Giants. I do. I forgot how much fun down the stretch baseball is. It, it's just excellent. Well, I've rattled on now for 12 and a half minutes. I've taken up enough of your time. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Don't forget to comment down below. Scary jack-o'-lantern, goofy jack-o'-lantern. Let me know. My basement smells like pumpkin spice. It's awesome. College football is back. Baseball's nearing postseason. NFL returns tomorrow night. I forgot to mention that. The Detroit Lions take on the defending Super Bowl champions, Kansas City Chiefs. At Arrowhead, going to be a boatload of fun. So if it's on TV, check that out. Lots of good storylines. Football's more fun than you think it is. Uh, Yeah, wash your hands, you filthy animals. God bless you all. Peace out. Again, no music. So we're going to have to play this thing off. And the last thing you hear is the sound of my voice as you drift off into the deep blue sea of nothingness. Goodbye.